Welcome. This video will discuss how to find the inverse of a quadratic function. So to begin with, let's start with a simple quadratic function, as simple as it can get. If we were asked to determine the inverse relation of the function y equals x squared, it might be helpful to consider the graph of that, which would be this parabola. Notice its vertex is at 0, 0, and we can find other points on that parabola by simply plugging in some x values. Now the inverse of that graph would be the reflection over this line, which is y equals x. In other words, if we take the x and y coordinates of each of those points and switch them, we will get this set of points, which looks like a sideways parabola. So now the question is, what is the equation of that parabola? Now to algebraically determine that equation, we would switch y with x and x with y in the original equation, and then we're going to get y by itself. So to solve for y, we would need to take the square root of both of these sides. Now when we take the square root of y squared, that's simply to cancel out the square, right? That undoes squaring, so we're going to get a y on that side. But when we take the square root of x, we actually get two answers. We get the positive and negative root of x. So what we're looking at here is actually two functions put together. From here to here is the function y equals positive square root of x. Whereas this portion of the function is that y equals negative square root of x. So if we didn't have the plus or minus in front of that, we wouldn't get the full parabola. So this is the answer to our problem. Let's try another one. On our second example, I don't think we need to see the, the graph this time. We know that this is a parabola. We're going to go right to switching x's and y's for each other. Okay, and now that that's done, we need to solve for y. And in order to do that, we're basically doing order of operations backwards. So I'm going to start by adding 4 to both sides. I'm going to also switch the sides of the equation around. So I'm going to say my x plus 4 is over here now. And the y plus 3 quantity squared is on that left side. Okay, now it's time to undo the squaring by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. On this side, we're going to get y plus 3. And on this side, we're going to get the positive and negative root of x plus 4. So we're going to see that plus or, or minus show up on one side. And then our last step is to get y by itself. So we will move that 3 over to this side by subtracting 3. And here we have two radical functions put together to get a sideways parabola. Now for our third example, things are a little different. We still have a quadratic, but this time we have it in standard form. So when I switch my x's and y's, I now have a y squared and a y term. And if I have to solve this for y, I have a set of choices. We could complete the square, or we could use the quadratic formula. So to complete the square, might seem a little weird, but I'm going to be completing the square for the y's. We're going to take half of this negative 4 value and square it, which is positive 4. That just completed the square. And then to balance, I would subtract 4 outside here. And now we're going to write that as a square. So we have x equals y minus 2 quantity squared, and back here we have a plus 2. So now we're basically at this step where we were up here. Right now it's in vertex form. And when things are in vertex form, they're very easy to solve. So now to get y by itself, the first thing we'll do is subtract the 2 on both sides. And if we take the square root, I'm going to flip-flop our sides like we did over here. I'd get y minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 2. And lastly, we'll add 2 to both sides. Oops, that's a plus or minus. And we get a 
plus two at the end. So just remember, you do want things to be in vertex form if you are going to find their inverse. And we have one more example. This time, we want to find the inverse of a radical function. So just a, the most basic radical function we could have, y equals the square root of x. Let's think about the graphs like we did for quadratics. Now, if you plugged in some values, you would come up with these points. Notice that we don't get any points over here from negative x values, right? We would get non-real solutions that don't show up on this graph. So my domain would be from 0 to infinity. If we found the reflection of that graph over the line y equals x, we would find these three points, right? Again, no, no negative x values. And it looks like we only have half of a parabola. So when we go through our algebra, we want to make sure that we keep that consistent with our graph. So let's go to the algebra. Let's switch x and y. And this time, to cancel a square root, we're going to square both sides. And I'm also going to flip-flop these sides around. So now I have y equals x squared. But if I were to graph y equals x squared, I would get the full parabola over here. And I don't want to get that. We basically want a piece of that parabola. So this is um, going to be written, I, I guess you could say, like a piecewise function. We have to say that this is the inverse, this y equals x squared, but with a restricted domain. So I'm going to make a little note here that has to be part of the equation, saying that the domain is only from 0 to infinity. This would be the answer to that question, right? Even though no one asked for the domain, that's part of the equation. And we'll do more of these throughout the unit, but you basically have seen the basic idea. Good luck with those.